recorded. Okay. So uh, one thing that we could do inside classes is to make sure that no one else could inherit from it. And if we want to do that, we would make the class final. And the moment I make any class final, this keyword that we used to make to uh, make it constant, it will enforce that whoever tries to inherit from it, it will say you cannot inherit from this class. Okay? Um, how it differs with the public, private, and protected, you were talking about the C++. Uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember everything uh, by heart. Maybe the language has some differences. But in Java, the only real big thing you could do with uh, classes is to say, hey, this class cannot be used by anyone else. No one can inherit from this. And if you want the class not visible to others, well, then you could do something similar to this, which is you create a class inside here. Let's say public class person has a public class... Uh, pet right and by doing this no one else could see pet except for person so this is kind of hiding this class from others right so person could create a pet right uh, my pet uh, so that would be a private type in items it, it's not inheritance that's the thing this is we're hiding that class from others, and person could create that class, to create that object, pet, but no one else can see pet. And again, this is bec uh, we gotta make this private, let's say. So, let's take off the final for a second. So, uh, let's say if I try to create, um, or actually, let's do it in main. If I try to create pet here, right? You'll notice that it's never going to show it to me in my ID because pet is not accessible, right? Well, actually, it's it's private. Sorry, sorry. Actually, I didn't explain that correctly. Give me one second. So over here, we're hiding it from others. If they want to access it, they could probably do person dot pet. Depending on the language, you probably won't be able to do that at all. Excuse then, me, son. Yes. The pet is just a class inside person, but it's not in inheritance. Yes, it's nothing to do with inheritance, this. Okay. This is more about hiding the class pet as much as possible. And the moment you put it inside of another class, we're kind of saying pet is only going to be used by person and no one else. Right? So it's this thing called the inner class. Okay, we'll come back to this uh, a bit later. This is not... You can't... At this level, we kind of don't want to do this ever. Uh, at this level, really, the only mo moments we want to do this is when this inner class is only going to be used by a person and no one else, right? So by making it private here, right? Uh, <clears throat> by making it private here, we could still create it, create a pet. Let's say this is my cat, or this is my pet, and new pets sorry my tells it's not going to see i could create it here but i cannot create it outside i, I i'm not allowed to okay whatever i try to do it won't let me because it cannot see it it's set to private okay this is again information hiding we're trying to do but we'll come back to this when we need it. You're gonna see this in your careers a lot, actually. When, let's say, you go into something much bigger, like let's say if you go to Android, you'll see a lot of this inner classes being used. But should you use it or should you not use it? This, I would say, wait a bit more than when you fully grasp uh, everything else, and we'll come back to that. Cool? Yep. Yes. Any other questions? And I, again, we'll come back to, like, we'll come back to more definitions and more uh, more rules and whatnot. There's a lot of stuff we, we barely touched or didn't touch. So the only thing I would say to get from this last five minutes is if we have the final keyword here, 
Well, that means no one else could inherit from this class, okay? I'll put it inside. So, final classes. Excuse me, sir. Yeah? So what if it's inst instead of final, there is a private? Uh, okay, just one second. Final like class. instead of public, there is private. Okay, just so. one second. So final class means no one can inherit from this class. Okay. So rather than, uh, we're going to leave the final there as commented out, okay? So it's not going to affect everything. But the question was, what if this was in public, but it was private? Right? Notice what happens right away. I get a compiler error, which says, hey, you cannot make a class private. Well, because if you make it private, okay, let's make this class private, who is it going to be able to access it? If you remember what private means, it means that only this class has access to it. Well, if this class is the only person that has access to it, how could anyone create the class or the object person? It's impossible. There needs to be at least one one creator, someone that could access and create you. So usually in main, we would try and create teacher, person, etc. Right? But if person is private, well, you have no rights to even access it or call it or anything like that. If we made it inside as an inner class, then that would be fine. So inner class, happy, and whatever that is. Because inner classes, we're saying it belongs to only person. Inner class, if we make this public, well, then it belongs to anyone who wants it, but it's still part of person. So if you want to access it, you do person dot happy. I hope that clears up. And again, these are great questions because what if this was that or this was this? This is great stuff to try and see the difference. What does it do? What doesn't it do? Ooh, it's getting cold. Let me close the window. But this is the good stuff you need to do. One more. All right. Sorry, I'm back. Uh, does that answer the question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hello? Yes. Yes. So, and sir, there's also a thing with static and non-static uh, static methods. Like we can't call a static method from non-static static method. Uh, it depends on the language. But usually when you make uh, something static, you're not making it part of an instance. You're making it part of the class itself. So a good example of this would be student. Student over here. We have something that's shared with all the instances. So this is shared with each object of student I create, but this is actually part of the class person, right? And we're doing this because the next ID determines the new ID of any new students we have, right? So whenever we create an, uh, a new student, we set the ID to the current value of next ID, and then we increase it. And last time we determined that if this wasn't static, well, then every student is going to have the same ID, which is zero, and then they're going to go up by one. But it's always going to be zero, the ID, because no one knows about any other instance. They don't share that. Um, good example of this would be uh, you guys are sharing one teacher. But if, if you didn't make your teacher static, as an example, it's not the correct uh, definition here, but if you didn't make it static, then each one of you would have a personalized teacher. And that would be kind of a different meaning than when it's static where it's shared between everyone. So usually when something is static, we say it belongs to the class person and not to the instance of the object. And now, why would you make any functions or methods into static? Well, sometimes these methods, these actions, don't require the object for it to function correctly and a good example of this is the math class let's go back here whenever we use the math class right and we do dots well if I wanted to get the round of something 
I don't need an object. I don't need any other information than the number I'm putting in here, 345. That's it, right? So there's no reason that round shouldn't be static because it doesn't require anything else to function correctly, right? So if we go hold down control and click on round, you'll notice it's set to static because all the information he needs is from the parameter, which is the value given that they want to round. So in these cases, creating an object math is actually hurting us because it's wasting memory space. So math object equals new math, right? I don't know if it doesn't allow us. In this case, it doesn't allow us, right? But this is a waste of time because we don't need to hold on to any values to be able to use the math dot, let's say, uh, rounds or... Sorry? Uh, guys, I'm going to mute you if you're, you're not talking, okay? Uh, I'm going to mute, mute, okay. Sorry, I'm hearing you in my ears. Uh, so again, if we don't need to store any values to hold on to anything. It's much better just to make them static and make it part of anything. So they don't have to, you don't have to create an object to be able to use uh, any of these. I don't need to create an object to figure out what's the absolute value of something, right? I just need the specific value. This is the moment you're gonna figure out that I need static methods rather than an object that has a functionality that does that. So, sir, uh, basically we use static for uh, not creating the copy uh, of the same thing. Mm, I didn't know. I, I don't, I, I didn't, you want to reword that? Uh, so, basically, uh, we use the word static to uh, not to create the copy, uh, the, the different copies of the same variable. Like, um, yeah, that's a good example. So, student over here, we want to have a shared, uh, a shared field, a shared variable between all objects of students, right? So this next ID belongs to all students. And if you notice, we have the same one in teacher. So this next ID belongs to all teachers. And it belongs to all of them. And it's set to private, so only accessible inside classes of teacher. But all different instances of teacher, so if we go look back here, all different instances of these they're all sharing one unique static variable, which is the next ID. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So there's many uses for static. One being, hey, it's a shared variable for, for all of them. Another being that function or that variable doesn't need anything else to do what its job is. And again, the best example is math. And if you guys remember in math, there is some special uh, numbers such as pi. If I type in, can I get pi? There we go. Pi is gonna be static because it exists always at the same value. It doesn't need to create an object just to get the value of pi. That would be a waste of space, right? Remember we have limited memory, even though the memory is really big, right? Even though, so performance even though our memory, let's say I got 16 gigs, you'll notice that I'm still using 12.3 12 right away with barely anything running, right? So we wanna optimize as much of disk space, as much as memory space, as much as speed we're using from the computer, right? We don't wanna use, uh, <clears throat> we, we don't wanna just randomly use because we're gonna max out this thing every year. Every year you notice your applications, your projects, whatever, they get more complex, more features, more things, and this thing is just gonna increase. And at some point we're gonna reach the maximum space we need and then the user needs to upgrade again, right? So the, most of the stuff I'm doing right now on my computer would not be accessible to most of you guys because you have a max space of four gigabytes of memory, right? And the thing you would do is, well, go ahead and delete a lot of applications. So this is something important to understand. And the, having these static, well, we're only getting enough space for a, <clears throat> for a double, which is eight bytes. If I create the object math, well, then I need to store the space for this one, for this one, for every variable that it has. And that could cost it a lot. 
cool so math is a great class to understand static the purpose of static any uh, other questions so um, so we're gonna move on uh, so actually let's go to hmm. Well, uh, while we're at it, let's go back to teachers. Let's go back to annotations. Uh, annotations exist to create some, uh, like we said, <coughs> to provide information for the compiler. So it provides information to the compiler to know that this is something I'm trying to overwrite so I don't do mistakes. If it does, it will let me know at the compile compilation time that I did a mistake, right? That's the first purpose. Uh, it could also serve in other ways, such as, let's say, um, let's, take, let's stay student as an example. Let's say this get dues, it's not good anymore. It's deprecated. So we could over here, these are some of the built-in ones. Okay, you'll notice there's a lot of these annotations and you could create your annotations too, maybe in the future. Let's say this deprecated one. It's a cool way to let people know that this function, get dues, is about to be erased eventually. We're not using get dues anymore, right? And you could give it even more information by if, if he has a parentheses and over here, you could give it some value. Since what version, for removal, etc., etc. Now the cool part is, let's say if I go back to main and I do, let's say I create a student for a second here. We're not gonna use annotations probably throughout the whole semester, so don't worry about it. But it's a cool feature. Now if I do get dues, look what it does for my IntelliSense. The IntelliSense will make sure it's at the last bottom thing because it's something we're trying to deprecate to remove. And secondly, it will cross it out telling you, hey, watch out, this is deprecated. If I do control Q to get the information, you'll notice it's saying deprecated. And if I did put information in my documentation, you should see a little information saying, well, get dues is getting replaced by something else. Okay? So it provides a lot of information during uh, comp compilation and during runtime. You're gonna see that as we go along. So it's something to note about. Cool? So annotation is cool. So I'm gonna comment this out. I'll leave it for you. Uh, other uses of annotation and if you get the Android course with me you're gonna see we're gonna use some of these annotations to make our code even more cleaner right so the main goal is always to go for this cleanliness and more understandable more readable code and this is a really important thing any questions okay so the next thing I wanted to teach you guys, let's go back to, let's go back to teacher over here. We want to again make this more readable. So if we look at the specialty, this comes down to a bit of a problem. If we go back and main, just erase this. Every teacher could be specialty in something. So let's say teacher one, specialty equals uh, Java. And then teacher two, his specialty is, let's say, C++. And then um, teacher three, his specialty is Java, right? So the problem that comes down here is the specialty is in a string. And <clears throat> teacher one and teacher three do they have the same specialty? You would say yes, and some of you would say no. For the people that would say these teacher one and teacher three don't have the same specialty, why would that be? Again, if you don't answer, I'll say it, but. Upper case and lower case. Exactly, so it, it's not the same exact value. The zeros and ones of Java lowercase, the J lowercase, is not the same as the Java with uppercase. So this causes issues. Well, now we're basing, uh, we're basing our values based of string, which is not always, uh, let's say, constants. It's not always going to be the same. 
and then we got to do double the work by making sure everything is lowered then we compare them maybe he added a space and now it's completely something else so we don't want this stuff to happen we don't want to let it to be uh, randomness to possibilities of mistakes possibility of different values right so it comes in this thing we call uh, let's go inside the class comes in this thing we call enums right an enum is basically a class it's again everything is objects right but what an enum allows you to do is to create constant values as possible values for that object what do I mean by that let's first of all we could create our enum here but I'd like to create our stuff in a bit outside we could either create a new package for enums or we could just go ahead and create a new Java class and we're gonna call this one specialty, right? So it's kind of a state that we're doing. So here I'm gonna select enum. And you'll notice it's the same thing as a class except it has the word enum rather than class. Now, first thing first, enums and classes are the same thing. So I could have attributes, so public string, uh, let's say name. I don't need to, one second. I'm sorry, Java is not my language. Why is it giving me an error? String, name. Okay, how about we do first the normal things, okay? So the first differentiation for uh, enums is they could have values. So over here, I'm gonna put some values in there for specialties. We got Java. Notice I don't take any uh, I don't take any, um, what do you call it, strings, quotes, single quotes, whatever. It's just directly the value itself, right? I could have C++. Notice this is going to mess up because of the pluses. It's not a, it's a reserved thing. I'm going to do C++. And usually you want to make this all uppercase because it's always going to be the same. So this looks a bit better, right? Constant value stays the same. So Java, C++, let's put one last one, let's say, I don't know what languages you guys are working, but eventually you might do some HTML. C Sharp, anything. C Sharp is a good one. That's one of my favorite languages. And now, what we created here are values for our specialty. And this is important. So we'll come back to this in a sec. So let's go back to teacher. Inside teacher, rather than having a public string specialty, in this case, we'll have a public specialty specialty. And the values that we could put in here now are gonna be restrictive to what, what we defined here. So we could say specialty.c++.csharp.css.java, whatever. Right? And now if we go inside main, you'll notice that teachers cannot just add whatever they want. It has to be something that's defined, such as specialty dot, let's say, Java, right? Over here as well. And because of that, I can't make any mistakes. I can't make any different values, right? So we're making the cleanliness, uh, we're making our code a bit more clean where we have definite answers and it looks much neater than having ja um, having strings where you could type in anything you want. Is that clear? And so let's go back to our specialty here. So something at the end of all this, by the way, you'll notice that whatever is not being used is gray, whatever is used is purple. Then all of this, the after defining our values, we want to put a semicolon there. Now, because this is also an object, we could create um, variables of any sorts that we want. So let's say, <clears throat> I don't know, let's say integer um, age, right? So now we could say the, the specialty, how, how many proficiency, how many, eight, how many years you've been doing it. So how proficient are you in it? And we could give values, right? We could do the same thing for uh, whatever type you want. And we can make it public, we can make it private. We could also create a constructor. So whenever you create the object, you need to give me 
<coughs> the specialty. So, um, well, let, let's say you just give me the years and you set the specialty yourself. So here I need the it. Here, I don't need to say it's public because it has to be public by default. Okay? And, and here, we'll get an error if we have a constructor. So for each one of these, we have to call the constructor. So each one of these are going to become like a constructor. So this is a bit of a weird syntax. Over here, all we got to do is add the parentheses and give it the years. In this case, not the best code I'm just randomly figuring or writing stuff and in Java it's a bit different Whatever. okay so years wasn't probably the good best example because I don't know we could call it maybe um, ID would be probably better so this would be a private ant ID so each ID references to one of these rather than years so this would be ID, and each one of them has a specific ID. Right? That sounds better. We could also create other functions, or, or even override functions, such as override, and we override the two string. Right? And we could return whatever we want for this. So really, an enum is really nice, but the best usage is to give it a state. A state could be a specialty, it could be, uh, let's say, example, it could be the seasons, it could be the, um, if the show is on, is it on Hayatsu, is it in season whatever, is it what? It's the moment when you see values uh, that could be different, but it's always known values, right? A name is not a good example, but let's say a specialty is a good example. A season, is it winter, is it spring, is it uh, autumn, or whatever it is. The months of the calendar, right? Months, seasons, um, I don't know, what else can you guys think of? Whatever you could give it a state, so you could equal one of these values. So let's say seasons, it would be spring, winter, um, I don't know what other uh, seasons we have. Okay. Autumn. Autumn, etc. Et Months could be January, February, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it could be colors. It could be red, green, blah, blah, blah. It's known values for something. So we're creating states, and this could create, <clears throat> make our code a bit cleaner by having that. Right? We could go a bit further saying here teacher actually let's go to person inside person we have genders what are the known genders here we left it for character well what if the user enters p which gender is p we don't know if the user enters z which what what is that right so what we could do in this case is again create a new java class in this case an enum and we're going to call it gender and inside gender we're going to have male Gonna have female we're gonna have binary we're gonna have uh, na for not disclosed etc etc whatever values you want to have in there so now when you create a gender you don't say character but you say gender and we expect a value that we define and if it's not there you're doing it wrong basically now we don't allow you to put anything you want you have to specify a gender from the values given. Right? Same thing as here. Right? So here we're we're making sure that when someone creates when someone creates a teacher, they can't put a character, they'll have to mention it. Gender dot let's say male. Uh, teacher is not fixed. Here it should be gender. And same thing for students. Well, I gotta change this. So gender dot uh, male. This one, let's say it's gender dot female, right? And now we're making the code more, um, first of all, clean, and secondly, 
we're making sure that no mistakes could happen. We're, we're focusing that the user has to specify a value defined, right? If it's a character, he could enter any character in the world. He could have put an at sign and we wouldn't be able to check it unless we do these F statements and whatever need be. Right? I'm just gonna replace all of this. And it could have been anything. It could have been binary. It could have been the guy didn't define it, it's NA. Cool. Any questions about enums? Again, remember that our goal is to have clean code and this is helping us. This looks much better than having one character. First name and last name are not states. That's not a value I could always know. If we just look at the amount of people we have in here, some people are called uh, Aden, some people are called Amita, some people are called Harika, Hamadri, Javid. There's a lot of different names in there and we can't know all the names that exist in the world. It's too much. So in those cases, we want first name and last name to be anything. We want it to be string. But in the cases of gender, it's going to be an option between the four, five, ten options that exist right now, whatever they are. Cool. And uh, again, specialty. Again, this could be anything. It could also be cards, right? You have the ace, the king, the queen. And then you got the numbers. Uh, I don't know what it. Ten. Nine, nine, nine. Right? So any type of states is nice. And this makes your code much cleaner. And you're going to see that in the assignments given hopefully later. Cool? You could do a lot of funky stuff with this. I'm not going to go in details, but really the only thing you really need is the values. Let's say this one's a good example. Where is gender? Gender, you just need the values and that's it. Right? Usually this is what enums are being used for. But again, uh, so, yeah. A uh, question about the arrow point class. Like, uh, we we can use enum for the state. Like, uh, if the engine is started. Exactly. Then... Uh, you'll see the next assignment for the the ones that have the airplane uh, assignment. You'll see the next assignment is to actually make it uh, enum. Okay, but don't lose the assignment you currently have. I'll give you uh, specifics uh, based on your class. I need all the variations of the assignment. But yes, you could use it with enums and make your code much cleaner. And I'm going to give you the solution sooner or later, and you're going to see it's, it's much better. Ah, I see some chat stuff. Sorry, I didn't see that. Static use for not creating multiple copies and same program. OK, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know how enum works in Java, but in game development in C Sharp, I use enums to define state of game. That's great. That's actually a great use. If person died, then it should not have any moment. If he is at level one and, and level completed, then it should go to the next level. Uh, does enum work same in Java? Java and C Sharp are actually really close to each other. I believe C Sharp is a much cleaner language. Uh, mind you, it got invented much later, so they had a lot of time to yeah, sorry it's so much cleaner <laughs> yeah it, it's much more readable uh, Java it was created in the 90s and the problem with Java is well the problem with anything is you always have to support the previous version so they can't just go ahead and erase things or undo all of the stuff they've done because it's gonna make a lot of applications not work correctly anymore and this is a problem this is why we started using these annotation saying, hey, it's deprecated, it's still there, so your thing doesn't crash, but you might want to start moving to the no newer version or the newer commands. And you're going to see that over time. And again, uh, our main goal, well, our, the goal is to make it as English as possible and eventually uh, make it as if we're talking or we're having a conversation with the computer. But to do that, we have to build those little blocks and over time, we learn from our mistakes. When they started computers for the first time, they made billions of different issues, mistakes, where they got to the point where we are now. And even now, if you notice, there's a lot of, um, let me actually take a, if you notice now, there's a lot of JDKs, right? Like releasing and 
if we look at every, let's say I'm hoping, uh, this is not what I want. I wanna, let's say if I do JDK features, right, version wise or comparison, let's say, I don't know. And we look from one version to the next, you'll, you'll start seeing, look, they're not far apart. Now it's becoming per year, it used to be per, four or ten or etc and c plus plus they were following the the standard which was to release it every 10 years which was stupid because technology was moving too fast <clears throat> and they they changed it recently and the fact is what i'm trying to say is with every new version you're going to get some new features and these features are based on our experience as a whole community and eventually you guys are going to be part of that community so it's good to follow and to voice your opinions well maybe not yet because you're still a beginner uh, but eventually you kind of want to be participating in this because it will determine the direction your language is going to go and a lot of people they just complain about everything but they never voice anything uh, anyway I'm going off topic so I'm gonna stop there cool just coming back here any other questions on enums can you please print uh, one enum on screen? Uh, one more time, I couldn't hear you correctly. Printing enum on screen. Printing enum on screen, sure. So let's go to main. And what we want to do, uh, well, let's go ahead and just print the enum, see what it does. Um, and let's say specialty dot and if I print this what do you guys think is gonna print ah, we got an error ah, I forgot to change some genders from character to gender this compilation compile error is the best stuff so as I change my code mistakes do not come so if we print out C++ where was it if we print out C++, it will print out C++. And only speciality. Will it print all? W one more time. Uh, only speciality in if, the syntax, not C++. If we do specialty, uh, well, it's giving me an error. Uh, but usually specialty, <clears throat> you overwrite the two string, and it would print you out whatever the two string is. I don't know why in this case is giving me an error. Uh, did I misspell it? No, it's perfectly fine. I don't know why inside Java enum you can't directly put it because it's an object. You should, uh, every object inherits from uh, object, right? The root of everything. This should have worked fine. To be honest, I don't understand why it's not Oh, because this is not an object. <laughs> Sorry, this is the class itself. So if I create a specialty here, and let's say this is my specialty, and by default, um, whatever, let's say here it takes an ID. Okay, I don't really need to do it like this. Actually, this is bad. Uh, this should have been, sorry, this should have been like this. And then I could give an ID here, but it's given to us with this. It's a bit weird in the syntax. I forget it all the time. But now if I print S, right? Now it's gonna do whatever the two string is. So let's try that. Or not. <laughs> this is nice. Again, sorry, uh, I don't know Java by heart. These are the stuff that even I need to reread or read it to. So in this case, whenever you print out S, it's always gonna print out the value. I'm wondering why it's not printing out the two string. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm guessing each one of the enum is a bit special, okay? Sorry, this m might have to go read into the, the documentation. Any other questions? If someone has uh, some knowledge on this, you could add on, but I don't know more than that. Uh, I'll have to read into it. 
But to be honest, uh, I don't usually, or you wouldn't usually print out uh, <clears throat> the object itself, right? You would usually do something with enums, you would usually use a switch and say, hey, based on the switch, so let's say, uh, let's say on the teacher, okay? So based on the teacher dot specialty, I'm gonna do something else. So uh, if he's if if his specialty is C plus plus, I'm gonna print out um, teacher one dot get first name. Uh, is good at C plus plus. Right, you would do something like this. Case if it's Java, let's copy this whole thing. And here you would say Java. Case if it's say CSS, same thing, so for so on. And you would do the same thing for the default. You would, you would put all the cases. And the cool part about the cases, sometimes you could even, well, first of all, it makes this much cleaner, uh, especially if you have a lot of if statements, this could become, because again, it's a state. We know every different state that it could be. Uh, we can make our code much cleaner. If you look at the airplane, eventually I'll give you a solution for airplane with enums, and it would be this, basically. That will come with experience. For lecture here, it's not gonna change much. Cool? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Uh, let's see what's next that I wanna show you. So we talked about the final, we talked about overriding. Um, again, there's a lot of things that I probably didn't have time or didn't show you. Uh, we'll come to it eventually, or you'll come to it by yourself over time. A lot of things like telling you about it is meaningless. Like let's say that final here, if I, let's say go back to student here, uh, actually go back to person here, where we said if you add the final, well this class cannot be inherited. Well when are you actually gonna use that is gonna be a bit further down the line as you progress in the field. But you'll notice that everything that's being mentioned will make your work much simpler, much easier. Uh, again, you could have went without having this final keyword ever used, but it would make your workload much more, let's say, as an example. <clears throat> Sorry, let me drink a bit of water. Okay, so inheritance being done, um, Let's go one step further, okay? We're, we're going, when I reach the end part, actually, let, let's start with, uh, let's start by touching polymorphism before we go to the next step. Polymorphism is the final thing about your foundation, but polymorphism requires inheritance and it requires a couple other things such as abstract and interface. Well, you could use any of them to create polymorphism. Now, what is polymorphism? Polymorphism allows you, actually, let's go ahead and take this code out of here. One second, extract method, let's put that, that was more inheritance, I don't remember what it was exactly. Oh my God, you're so blind. Okay. Bandana? You want to add to that? Spandana. Okay. Well, that was interesting. Um, so let's go back to this. Uh, I lost my train of thought. So uh, let's say polymorphism. Yes. So polymorphism is interesting because 
it allows you to take the shape and form of anything you want. And this is really important. Why would this be important? Is because you do not know who's coming in for whatever need be. Uh, let's say an example. A good example I like to use is let's say you're you have a shop you have a car uh, well you have a shop for uh, vehicles you don't know which vehicles is gonna come but you know for a fact that all vehicles have uh, let's say brakes they all have a start a key starter they all have an engine they all have wheels right some vehicles have two wheels some vehicles have four right motorcycles have two Cars have four, trucks have six, seven, eight. But the fact is, they all have wheels, they all have engine. So with polymorphism, rather than repeating our code multiple times, we could expect whichever one comes in. We could expect a higher class. We could expect an abstraction, a uh, not knowing exactly which one it is specifically, but knowing that they're all the same, we could kind of group them together, let's say. So a good example of this would be, let's say, um, I'm gonna create a function. Um, it's probably not the best one, but let's say, uh, inside this function, let's make it static because main doesn't belong to anything. Public static void, uh, I don't know, print details, okay? And let's say in this one, I get a teacher. So for that teacher, I want to print out all the details that comes in. And I want to do the same thing for a student. Again, my, my examples are not really built well or whatever. This would have been better if he was, let's say, a vehicle. And uh, from vehicle, you have a car, a truck, a motorcycle. They all inherit from vehicle. And the inheritance part is important. So the first way of polymorphism, well, actually, before we, we start it, say I want to print the details, and I'm going to do some C outs here. I want to say that teacher, I want to get his name. Oops. And I want to get last name. I also want to get. Uh, I also want to get. What else teacher has? Let's see. Um, let's do a bit, a few things, and I'm going to show you why I'm doing a few things. Uh, let's say I want to get his age. Okay. And I want to get. His specialty. Whatever we left it as public, but we'll we'll keep going like that. Okay? And inside the student, so the print details for student, I want to do the same thing, but in this case it'll be a student. And in this case the student doesn't have a specialty, but he would have uh, courses, right? Or let's see what else is in there. Something specific to a student. Get dues. I'm just going to do that to make it a bit simpler. All right, so system.out. Dues plus student.get dues. Now, looking at these two functions, print details, we could move this down. Looking at these two print details, what do you notice? Same function, but different definition. Good. So the first thing is, it's the same function name, but the function signature is different. So the function uh, signature contains a teacher or a student. And the body is almost the same thing, except for the last lines for both of them, which is more specific to a teacher or a student. But you'll notice there's a lot of repetition. And you'll notice that this is being repeated, the function names, because they both inherit from person, okay? 
So whenever you have a repetition, this is kind of the moment where you got to think about this. Well, this is fine. I can make my life easier, but eventually I might, if I ever, for some reason, get first name changes, I have to go change it 10 places wherever they are. In this case, we only have two places. If ever something changes that's inherited from both of them, we'll have to go in all of those places and change for these, um, these change, basically. So the more times you repeat yourself, the more likely that you're gonna have a mistake because your code is all over the place. Okay, it's not the best <clears throat> definition, but for now, for as your level is perfectly fine. So what we want to aim at is to have code that's reusable as much as possible. So this print details is perfect that you overloaded it and you have two of them, but we kind of want to merge them and use only one. But how could we do that when the object is different? This is a teacher and this is a student. This is where polymorphism comes in. It says we don't have to care if it's a teacher or a student that comes in. We have to care that it's a person that's coming in. Teacher is a person. Student is a person. So it doesn't matter which one comes in. They're both really the same thing. So what we could do is say public static void print details. And rather than getting a student or a teacher specifically, I say, hey, get a person. And this is perfectly fine because a student is a person, a teacher is a person. I can't do the inverse though. A person is not always a student, a person is not always a teacher. Okay, I know this is a bit, comp uh, a bit hard to grasp here. Just try to follow along and we'll see what happens. So notice that these two lines are repeated inside the teacher part and inside the student part. So if I grab this and I put it here, it won't work, but if I change student to person, it works out. Then in all three cases, they're doing the same thing. Right, so far so good. Actually, before, before we do anything more, let's go and try this out. So I'm gonna create a student and a teacher and we'll go from there. So this is my teacher, let's put that in there. And this is where my student, this is my student. I'm a bit lazy to do the whole thing. So now, if if I do uh, if I do print details, I could pass in a teacher, right? You'll notice it started becoming gold, basically saying this function is being used. I could print out a student, and in both cases it works out fine. Notice that my classes, this one is not being used because we never passed a person. Actually, what is it printing? Yeah, okay, there we go. So the first part is printing out the teacher, Reza. His age is zero. Let, let's give it an age. Teacher one dot age. Uh, I don't have a set age. Uh, it's okay. We'll just let's change the age to something else. You're printing height. Sorry. I I, I missed out. So I was saying that you're printing height. Yeah, I, I just noticed it. Thank you. But e either way, age is, uh, I'm not defining age either. Actually, let's do it height. That would be better. Height. Thank you for telling me that. Um, okay, so get height on all cases. And in this case, we could change. Well, let's run it first. You notice again it's zero, but now we can set the height. Teacher one dot set height. And let's give it three point four. Why is it giving me an error? Uh, we're not handling the exception. I'm just gonna cheat it here. I'm gonna throw it to whoever needs to handle it. Okay. I'm just gonna ignore the handling. This is not something you wanna do. This is a bad thing. This is basically saying we're gonna let the other guy who's running our application deal with it. Well, main is our application, so no one's dealing with it. This is a really bad thing to do. Uh, but for now, it's fine. Set height, let's give it 34.6. Okay, so now if I print these two values, <laughs> so you see, I, I, I can't give 34, and it just throws it to the screen. So let's say 
five. Right, we have some maximum values and minimum values inside set height, right? Otherwise, it throws an exception. Anyway, coming back here, you'll notice that the name, height, this is the teacher, and his specialty is C++ by default. We didn't change the specialty. For the students, it has a name, a height, and a dues. And the dues, uh, let's try and see if we could set dues. Yes, we can. Let's say he owes 500 to the school. Okay, and we get something nice for both of them. Now, the problem is, it's not a really a problem. Again, nothing is ever a problem. You could write everything inside the main and we're done, right? This print, I could have just copied these three lines and just put it out of, uh, rather than putting the function call. But the problem is, we're repeating ourselves multiple times. Okay, this is where polymorphism comes in. Because we know teacher is actually a person and student is a person, and these two uh, functions that we're using, get first name, get last name, get height, or all belong to a person. Well, then at that moment, we could say, you know what? Do not use, do not use these functions at all. Use the other function, which is looking for a person, and it doesn't care which one it is. So now, let's say if I run it, we still get the same values, right? We still get the same stuff that we were showing, right? Actually, you know what, let's do something. I wanna show you, actually, we're gonna move this up for a second. Oops. Okay, so right now this is what I have. And because this is more specific, because I'm passing a teacher, even though I overloaded it, it's gonna use the more specific uh, functions. In this case, teacher, when teacher is sent, and student, when a student is sent, okay? Let's put in, let's put in these breakpoints. Let's try this out, the normal debug that we usually do. So now, when I go inside debug, and I go inside this function, so now the computer is waiting for me. I go inside the function. You'll notice it's going to go here, and teacher, right, is going to be printed get the first name, get the last name, and on the console is printing those, right? Because the teacher object, the teacher object has all the stuff that a teacher does, plus it has all the person stuff that it has, right? Such as first name, last name. Everything is inherited and given to him, right? Now let's go for the student. We go inside, the student runs, and again, the student has all of those because it's inherited from the person. The only thing that's not inherited is the get dues. The same thing goes for the teacher. Okay. Now let's say, let me stop this application. Uh, let's just continue. So let's say rather than using these two, I'm going to use this class person. And what's so interesting about inheritance, we are saying we don't know which person is coming in. We don't know if it's a teacher or, or think of your barber. When your barber gets someone to cut their hair, they don't know what profession that person has. They don't know if they're a teacher, a student, an accountant, a, a CEO of a company. They don't care. What they care about is that person having hair on their head, right? This is the same thing. We don't care which person comes in, but we know that object that's coming in is a person. Why? Because a student inherits from a person. A teacher also inherits from a person. So we could say student is a person. We could say teacher is a person. So we don't have to care which one it is. So now if we look here and we run it again, Right? We're going to pass in teacher to person. So we're in here. Now the teacher class is kind of hidden right now. 
We don't get any specific stuff that's related to teacher, even though it has it. Okay? Even though in this location in the memory, it has the extra space, the extra like date of joining and specialty, currently it only sees it as a person. And that's perfectly fine because all we need is person uh, functions, right? And we print that, it's perfectly fine. Let's try this again with a student. So even though student comes in, student is a person, so it's perfectly fine. And we get their first name and the last name because those are part of person. Even though the object has specific, even though the object has specific student stuff, right? Does that make sense? Any questions? So this is polymorphism where we do not need to figure out which object is, but we know all of them are basically that. So we know all of them is a person. All of them being teacher is a person, student being a person. We can't do this with something else that is not that. So we can't send in, let's say, a string. That wouldn't work. We can't send in a new course. That wouldn't work either because a course is not a student. Right? So what is in there? Let me just, so one second. So it takes a name and a max amount of students. And now you get an error, say, whoa, I require the type person, but you provided course. It's fine over here because a teacher is a person. A student is a person, right? I'm repeating that word a lot because it's, it's what you need to do this. <clears throat> so we're abstracting, we're kind of thinking it's the, the, same as, the same thing as a garage. Inside the garage, we don't care which type of vehicle is coming in. We just know that all vehicles have tires, engines, and so forth, so on. A motorcycle is a vehicle, a, a car is a vehicle, a truck is a vehicle. Even though they could do different things, such as uh, a motorcycle, you could do flips, jumps, and whatnot. A car, you could transport four people. A truck, you could transport loads of material, right? Even though they're different, they're actually, their route is the same. They're all gonna have an engine, tires, a brake, a drive, right? You could think of yourself as a barber. The person coming in, doesn't matter who it is, they're always gonna have hair on them, right? So what you're expecting is a person. Until they are a person, a human being, they will have hair on them. You're not gonna deal with a machine, you're not gonna deal with a computer, you're gonna only deal with person, as a barber. And this same good thing goes for here, for print details, right? Any questions before I go further? Now the problem with this print details, the problem with this print details is I'm missing those details which were specific to a teacher or specific to a student. And I can't do that. Right? If I do system, well actually let's go ahead and just copy that one. If I go and do this, well, <clears throat> well firstly let's use the correct variable, person. You'll notice it's going to say, well this doesn't belong to the person class. So if we go here, person doesn't inherit from anything. And at the same time it has no attribute called specialty. So. I can't be anything specific to an inherited class, uh, a class that inherits from person, right? The parent cannot see what the children did. But what I could do is to figure out if that class is the correct class and typecast it before I print it. So I would say is a person uh, instance of what? Is it an instance of teacher? If it is, if it is, first thing you want to do is typecast teacher. Uh, sorry. We want to typecast it, so we want to put the parentheses in front and say this is 
a teacher, right? Then we want to put that. And we could really do this because we know the object given in is an instance of a teacher which inherits from person. And we could do the same thing for And again, we typecast it. And we print out, well, we print out that line. Oops. There we go. Cool. So now, based, depending on the instance that's coming in, if they're a teacher, I will print this. If that person coming in is a student, I'll print this. If you would think of it as a garage or as a barber, the barber will tell the guy, hey, are you a student? Yes, you are, then I'll give you a discount. The person could ask, hey, are you a teacher? Well, it's teacher's day, I'll be nice to you, I'll give you a discount, right? Same thing goes with the garage. The garage could say, oh, this is a, a truck, huh? Okay, well, a truck requires a special oil that goes in, right? Stuff like that. So now, when we print, now when we print stuff, we get the specialty, and if it's a student, we get the dues. And notice that our print details has some shared functionalities, and that's perfectly fine. The cool part is we're not repeating our code anywhere. We're not redoing this into two different functions. It's to make this function more abstract, more, um, more, I don't know, the word here would be uh, more indecisive. No, it's not indecisive, but it's more like it doesn't really care who it is. Until it is a person, they will have it and they could do it. And this is the start of polymorphism. And this is really important. You're gonna see it later, you're gonna see this a lot. Polymorphism is something used throughout the, and the faster you master this, the faster you could move on to a good company. Okay? So in this case, we don't care which one comes in, we want that to happen. And you're gonna see this happening a lot. Uh, if you're, let's say, if you're going into web, you're going into JavaScript, whatever, they're doing the same thing. For each thing, it could be a button, and they could all be clicked. Well, we don't need to know which one got clicked, but we know they all have this function that is the click. And this is what it does. Um, where else do they use this? Let's say, um, I don't know, I, I, we'll, we'll come back to this a lot. You'll, you'll see it throughout the semester. Uh, this is, so, yeah. Uh, now now I, uh, we can use this uh, with the student, uh, like uh, set the course, course of the student and uh, then print it. Uh, where would you like to use it? You could do that anywhere you want. Uh, in the student, make the instance of, uh, of a student course and uh, set a course as a Java and, the, and then the print the, all the detail of the student. Means which course he opted and all, all the thing. I'm not sure where you want to do this. You want to do this in here? Yes, sir. In the student. Yeah, okay. So yes, you could do that because now that you know it's a student, you have full access to all its functions and all the other stuff. So we could add a new course, let's say a new course. And here we need to pass in, let's say, the name of the course and the amount of blah, blah, blah. And we could even print it out if you want. System.out, um, student dot give me the course, get, um, we have a get course. Get first name, get two names. Well, it doesn't have a course. Well, we didn't create a function for that, but oh, print courses. We could call this. So then we don't need to print Ellen. And now we could print all of his courses. And in this case, it's only going to print Java. We could add some courses in there, such as C++, such as Monopoly. I don't know. 
what every course has. Cool? And if we run this, just to test out everything we do, we try, test it out, make sure we understand. And you can notice that when we print Gopi Chan, we get the height of five, they owe 500, and they're currently taking three courses, Java, C++. And this is important because when we modify that object, remember we're modifying something on the heat memory. So if we come to outside of that function, well, that object has been modified. So if I do student one dot get courses, um, I don't know what they're called, print courses, there we go. Even though in here, in this part of code, I never added any uh, courses to students, well, it got added here, and these are all both referring to the same student, right? So we would still see, we would still see the cur courses added inside this function, right? Uh, but sir, uh, if we want to check, like, uh, only bring those students uh, who take a Java uh, with the enumerator in in uh, with this function student function uh, one more time I don't understand your question uh, like if we want to use innovator uh, for the course Java uh, animator uh, you, you mean enum yes enum uh, okay. those student uh, who obtain the course Java should uh, only print uh, those student name. okay so let me see if I got your question uh, you want to use an animator for the courses? Yes. Uh, but currently the course is a class. If we want to, we could change the course into uh, into an enum, if that's what you want. And then we could enumerate through it. Uh, so that would be easy. We just need to make this into an enum. And then we need to add the values that you could have. You could have Java, C++, so forth, so on. Okay, and then if, one second, let me just undo this change. And then if you want to, if you want to go just checking which one has that, well, you just add an if statement here, which says if the student uh, has that course, right? I don't have a get course here, that's the problem. But if the student's course equals this, or this student has this course, actually, do I have course here? No, so I could add, I could remove. Give me a second, let's go back to here. Uh, let's go to student one second. We're just gonna add a getter for the courses. Um, public void get courses. And we want to return courses. Okay, the type is not correct here. I'll fix it in a second. Actually, we'll, we'll use the IntelSense to fix it for us. Right? It's going to return a list of courses. And now here we could go through that list. if, Because again, it's a list, right? So we could either do this where we say uh, student.get courses. And from there, fine, because this is, um, this is a, it's not oh. a simple array. Yes. Sorry, you were going to say? Uh, is, uh, it's an array, so we have to use for each. Uh, yes, but there's a lot of helper functions like this contains So we could ask if it contains this specific Object for us, but in this case, we don't have those objects those courses. We'll have to do a bit better uh, Because the string name is not the object itself. Okay um, We could talk about that a bit later, but yeah, we'll have to go do something for each which would be the best thing student no, actually uh, for each course that the student has so student dot get courses so now I'm going through each courses that the student has if the course dot name get name equals let's say Java then I want to do something I don't know what you want to do uh, let's say you want to print see out um, let's say student dot get name has this course, whatever it is, right? And this is string, so we need to use this thing where it says equals, actually, wait a second, just to make sure the Java part, 
You'll notice it's giving me a little warning. It says you should <coughs> you should use equals rather than equal equal. In Java, it's a bit different. We'll, we'll talk about that another time. Okay. So if any of those courses inside the list of courses equals Java, then print out this line. Is this what you want? Is this, does it answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any other question? Okay. So this is the, the start of polymorphism where an object could become something else because in the end we're using inheritance, right? So because teacher and student is a person, well, then we could use them as if they were a person. And at any moment we want to go more specific, we could use this keyword instance of. And you're going to see this keyword being a bit different based on the language you use. Where we're saying this person, is it an instance of teacher or is it an instance of blah, blah, blah. Right? Actually, something cool that we could probably try right now is if we say teacher1, is it an instance of teacher? Actually, let's do something even better. We're gonna say inside our println because that was a question. It's gonna return us a true or false. We could say is teacher an instance of a person. Let's say actually the first one. Let's say teacher. A good question. Then we're gonna say three other questions. Is it an instance of person? And is it an instance of students? So right away we're getting an error here. Because you were trying to cast it, this will break right away. Right? So this is already the compiler is not allowing us to do this because he understands that teacher does not inherit from students, so he can't do it. So this is already wrong. And we could do one last one. Is teacher an instance of object? Cool. Let's try this out. And you could see for all three of them, because he allowed us, he says true. Cool. <clears throat> this polymorphism could be used in any way. So here we always specify teacher or student. Well, it could have also been in something like this. Person. Person equals new student. And inside there, I need the first name. Uh, let's take one of you guys, uh, Niha, Mia, and John. Right. Now, because student has the part of person, we could build something and put it inside person. Again, polymorphism. So this is getting kind of, not typecast, it's kind of getting hidden inside the bigger box, which is person or it's getting hidden inside the side boxes this is not a good definition I'm giving but you know it works out here okay and as we go further you'll this makes more sense we can't do the inverse though we can't say a student let's say that's one equals a new person let's go fill in the gap so we need a first name so let's go pick someone man noj come on so if I do this, this would be illegal move. Why? Because not every person is a student, right? You can't say the inverse. Any questions? Okay. So this is fun. Why would we even want to do these polymorphism? We already know as we're coding that this is going to be a student. Why would you want to put in a person? Well, the fact is, uh, let's say I would tell you, create me a, um, a school application. And the principal or the boss of all bosses, he's going to decide every new employee that gets hired. And inside your application, you don't know which employee is coming in or being entered until the moment the, the boss selects teacher, selects student, selects administrator, selects accountant. So because of that, this is all runtime issues where we don't know what's coming in. 
we're expecting one of these values, but we don't know exactly which one. We'll have to figure those things out inside of the inside runtime. So to give you an example, we could say we could ask the user, um, let's say press one to create well select what to create, okay? One for teacher, two for student, right? And we don't know which one he's gonna select. He could select teacher or student, and we don't know which one it is. In that case, we wanna do, uh, we wanna get his uh, input, so let's first create a scanner. Actually, uh, let me do something. Let me take out all of this. Refactor, polymorphism. And I'm telling you, this is really important stuff, guys. The, don't mess around. Uh, if, you, if you have questions, let me know. So in, anyway, so in this scanner, uh, we're going to create a new scanner. And we're going to pass in system.in. So we get some inputs from the console. And over here, we're gonna get his uh, input. And let's assume that he's always gonna enter one or two and nothing else, so we don't have to check for mistakes. All right, any questions? So based on their selection, which we don't know, right? So if we run this application, you don't know that the user is gonna press one, sorry, is gonna press one or is gonna press two. And based on the number he selects, you need to create that specific object. So here we could say, yes, Bandana, you have a question? I guess not. In this case, we could say, if the user input is one, then we want to create a teacher, right? Else, Let's say if user input equals two, then we want to create a student. And we want to have to be able to access all of that. So we're going to create a person here. Let's say uh, selected creation, I don't know, whatever. And we could leave it to the default value, which is no. We don't know which one it is until we read that user input. As soon as I read the user input from the user, the selection, the, the selected value, and let's say it's one, well, at that moment, I could say selected creation equals new teacher. And these values, let's say we would have got it from the user again. I don't know what else is in there. String last name and gender, let's say, whatever. Cool. And I could have done the same thing with, well, I have to do the same thing with this. New student. And again, what's in there? Control P, first name, last name. So look at this code. Now, this thing over here, if we would have ever specified he was a teacher, well then this is not possible. And if we would have specified it's a student, well this line is not possible. But because we specified it's a person and both teacher and student is a person, then it's perfectly fine. It would work, with you, whichever. This is polymorphism. It morphs into whatever it needs it to be. Does that make sense? So our code now, it's a bit more adaptable. So depending on which one he creates, we could give it more options, we could do more stuff, or we could just directly go ahead and print the selected creation, whatever that is. Right, and now if I run it, and I say it's a teacher, well, teacher X joined whatever school and so forth so on. If I run it again and I say it's a student this time, well, now we get just a student because we didn't override the two string. Cool? So we're making our code more adaptable to the situation that's going to happen. In this situation, we can't really foretell or know by beforehand which one's going to be. And to be honest, this is 
uh, polymorphism is the biggest issue for entry level and beginners. So the, the, a lot of times this would be a good question in an interview to see how far you understand this. They don't expect you to completely understand this, but if you go to like a high end school, uh, high end job, uh, let's say where they would pay you 100K starting at entry level, well, this is a knowledge you need to have known. But most companies, they don't expect you to understand it, or they don't expect the teacher to correctly do his job. So they would usually teach this over time to you or expect you to learn this over time. But if they're expecting you to learn this over time, you're on your own. And if you fail at it, they're probably gonna end your contract after the four months probation you get. So this is something important to understand. And the worst part is, you need to understand that polymorphism is going to be used because a lot of time you're going to read the guy's code and you're not going to understand why he has a, a different class here but now he could create something else right well this should tell you right away that teacher or student inherits from person or there is some chain of inheritance that's going on cool any questions So, well, congratulations. This is polymorphism. I hope you understand it. Um, and you, you'll see it being used a lot of places. Um, let's see. So the next two, the last two things left for us to learn. Well, a, a couple things left for us to learn. But the last two things for your OP foundation, your core, is going to be abstract and <clears throat> and uh, interfaces, which is again within the polymorphism, polymorphism uh, realm. So let's go ahead and grab this. Let's put refactor, um, extract method. So again, runtime, we never know what's going to happen, right? We want to expect everything. And based off the user's choice, we want to do this or do that. So if you were to create me an application that would make me a school or something. It's more the uh, Sorry? Uh, anyway, so if you were to make an application where it would take, uh, it would allow the user to create students or teachers and courses and so forth and so on, well, then use kind of need to use this polymorphism otherwise your application is going to get big for no reason right uh, your application would have been nested if statements that goes so far so many nested that it wouldn't make sense again you could put everything inside void main but do you really want to do that uh, so far our all our applications has been small because we're just students because you know a semester doesn't allow you to do anything really big Except for your project, which comes down to uh, maybe a hundred to a thousand lines. But when you build something real, something far more than just a few lines, a few basic features and whatnot, your amount of code is going to be in the millions. And it's a normal thing. And we don't want to have it too dirty to read at. Because if our code is not clean or, uh, or clear, We'll have to be wasting all our day trying to figure out this part that I'm looking at. And this is a bad thing to do. And you're going to see, you're going to join a lot of companies, some of you will, where the company doesn't put any standards and the code just gets more foggy and ugly and you're going to hate your life because all day what you're spending to do is reading code that barely makes sense. So this is why that's one of our goals. Cool? Clean code is... Uh, what I'm going to do though, it's 5.30, I need a small break to breathe and to drink water. So what I'm going to do is for the next five minutes, I'm going to answer any questions. And if you don't have questions, we're going to go on a break and we'll come back at 6.30. So is there any questions about what we just went through? Because this is really the hard part. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to learn about uh, more about the coding structure. Means how to design a code, uh, not just to code. Um, 
Uh, uh, so there's a few books and whatnot that tells you like one thing I really like actually. If you if you guys want to get a few books, you could get it. You could find it easily online. You do you. Uh, but there's this guy called uh, there's this book called The Clean Code which is nice and whatnot. The structure and the, the design of your whole application, this is a bit different. Uh, what you need to do early on is to learn what's available to you for tools and to design your whole application, this is gonna be over time as you gain experience. Okay, but this clean code is gonna talk to you about how to code a bit more better so your code looks a bit cleaner and uh, and we're, we're talking about a couple of those things, such as separation of concern, where we want every object to be just doing what it's supposed to, right? And inside main, inside over here, you just wanna have the logic, the algorithm for your application, okay? More about designing and whatnot. Well, first of all, I need to make sure that you know polymorphism, uh, you know all the stuff that exists. Uh, well, not all the stuff, but you understand the main core, the foundation, which is your programming skills, your OOP, which comes down to polymorphism. And then we need to look at some design patterns that exist. So you don't really need this, but the design patterns help you figure things out. And how to, <clears throat> how to design your whole application, the structure of your application, and what should be where, this will be built in you over time there, there's no there's no way I could teach that without you having some knowledge or some experience built into you right I hope that answers the question yes sir and uh, one thing I would like you guys to know is uh, so uh, one of the problems with people or with anyone that goes somewhere to apply for a job is they went and they done a lot of courses on, let's say, Udemy, okay? And they done hundreds of these and they made all these small repetitive uh, stuff. Like they made a tic-tac-toe inside Java, they made a tic-tac-toe inside C-sharp, they made a tic-tac-toe inside. They repeated themselves into these small projects that are meaningless, that, again, tic-tac-toe, it would take me like five minutes. What you need to do if you want to have a great portfolio is forget these small projects that you see in all of these things and build something big, something that you might be using or you might not be using. Uh, as an example, uh, let's say on GitHub, as an example, a something that I really like to use on my computer uh, is called, one second, I don't remember it, one second. Da, da, da. Let's go down. Something I really like to use is LIDAR or sonar. This is one good example. So inside here, if I look up sonar, what this is, it's a smart PVR for my movies, my TV shows, and whatnot. Okay. What's so cool about sonar? is it does a lot of stuff, right? It downloads things that you're interested, it finds them, it does everything, it renames them, it does more than just one simple task, okay? If we look at the amount of commits there is, the amount of code they've been doing, they've been working at this at least for two years. So last time there was an issue that was added here, it was two years ago, 17 months ago they worked on it, two months ago they kept working on it, there's 8,000 commits. This is at least 8,000 times that the code has been changed, right? And this is a cool project. Why? Because all of these people, just like me, they're interested in being able to download a movie and to the way they like it, right? Um, I don't know if you ever, you ever, I'm just using this as an example because I want to rewrite this because I think it's a bit bad, but uh, if you look, let's say, what is Sonar, let's go to their website. Sonar basically does this, right? You, you find the movie you like, you add it in there, and it will look for that for you. So it will find that quality that you're looking for online for you without you having to do much. Okay, so this is a project that most of us are interested in because movies and TV shows is something that we like. So I would suggest 
all of this to say this, I would suggest find a project that you're really interested in and actually build on that. Not something like a tic-tac-toe someone gave you as an assignment. Build something big and put that in your portfolio. And when you go to an interview, you will talk about that project and you're going to show passion. And you're going to show more than one little thing. Oh, yeah, my app, it was just about showing X's. No, you're going to say my app was to show some values that's in here and I needed to use this concept and this weird thing where I needed to connect to the hardware, to the software, and do all these weird shenanigans. And the more you talk about something passionately, the more people will perceive this and the more they want to hire you. Because they'll know that, first of all, you're not a guy that just does the minimum. If I ask you for an assignment, you just do enough to make that assignment go away. That's first of all. Secondly, you're passionate about software, making you learn new things every time. Sonar is not something you could do with just the simple knowledge that we currently have. You're going to have to build on multiple things. You're going to have to use multiple variations of things you never did. Right? And you can't Google any of these things. And this is the biggest problem. If I went online on Google and I did tic-tac-toe and I did, let's say, Java code, I'll find millions of this. Some hard, some easy, some really stupid, etc. But if I ever went and I said PVR code in Java, let's say, as an example, you'll never find this. Some people wrote something, but is it going to work or not? You have no clue because the last time this guy used it was five years ago. Right? So this is why I'm telling you to go and build something big. And if you need ideas, I wouldn't say ask someone else for ideas. Think about stuff that you use daily or think about stuff that you want to automate. And if it's worth it or not, it doesn't matter at your stage, you just want to gain experience. And the structure of your project will, you build on it over time. Cool? Any other questions? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break. Uh, we'll come back 